Hey guys, welcome back to another interesting topic. Today's topic is about time borrowing in latches. So what's a time borrowing? It's a property of latch where a path which is ending with a latch can borrow the time from the next path in the pipeline. Okay, this definition is too huge. Let's consider that a latch can be used to borrow the time from the next path in the pipeline first. And now let us look at an example where it clearly demonstrates what mean by time borrowing. So guys, let us consider a clock of time period 10. Okay, as you can see, 0 to 10, 10 to 20 and 20 to 30. And now let us consider a register to register path in a design. So this is the register to register path, a flip-flop 1 to flip-flop 2 and flip-flop 3. So in between the flops, we have a combinational logic A and B. Okay. So now, as you can see, whatever data which is launched at flip-flop 1, let us consider it's launched as it as 0. So it will reach flip-flop 2 at 10. So let us consider in this as an ideal case where setup time and hold time are zero and even clock skew and clock delays are zero. So if the launch edge of a flip-flop one is at zero, then we will get the data at the 10. Okay. So similarly, if we launch our data at 10, then we'll get our data at flip-flop three at 20. I hope you are getting so how it works, you know. Now, what if, what if this combinational logic A is very huge and the delay is greater than 10 units or 10 nanoseconds so what will happen then then our data will re reach at 12 nanoseconds let us say due to this delay and our data is reaching at 12 nanoseconds what will happen the flip-flop 2 will not capture the correct data i hope you're getting now as you can see that 0 to 12 our flip-flop will check at the only pause edges because it's a pause edge flip-flop but our if our data is coming at 12 then it's an sending the un incorrect data from flip-flop 1 to flip-flop 2 so here, this is a big problem. So how to avoid this? To avoid this problem, we can use a latch. So instead of using flip-flop 2, we are using a latch, which is a positive, positive level sensitive latch. That means whenever the clock is enabled or clock is high, the latch will work for a half, a half period of time. So as you can see in this, in this clock, so the, if the clock is uh, getting enabled at 10, uh, the latch will work from 10 to 15, okay? So the latch will be transparent from 10 to 15, whereas flip-flop is transparent at this edge only. So what are the benefits if we use a latch instead of a flip-flop? So even the data which is coming after 10 nanoseconds, let's say it's coming at 12 nanoseconds, is there's no problem because a latch can take the data because it's turned on from 10 to 15, it's transparent and open. So it can take the data from 10 to 12. So we can receive our data from 12, no problem, there is no problem. But this time is reduced for latch to flip-flop 3. So flip-flop 3 must get the data at 20. So the latch must send the data before 20 nanoseconds. So I hope it's a clear for you now. We are borrowing the time from latch. We are borrowing the time from latch because it's open for 10 to 15. And also this time is reduced for the next logic. So for the logic B, it should be such that it must be able to send the data before 20 units. So now let us consider a negative latch and see the same scenario how it works. So I'm considering the same circuit of flip-flops, but here I'm using a latch as a negative. So now let us consider the case, what will happen uh, to the clock and where the time is borrowed. So as you can see over here, this is the clock and this is the latch enable of the flip-flop. So whenever, suppose there is, no, we'll consider two cases where there is a time borrowing and there is no time borrowing, okay? So let's say there is no time borrowing and all the functionality is correct. That means a flip-flop one is able to send the data through the clock at A. A is the launch edge of the flip-flop one. So it will must be able to send the data before this neg edge, before or on this neg edge. So A to P will be our first point. Okay, from this, I'm considering path from flip-flop one to latch. So our flop must be able to send before this neg edge. So the latch must be able to send the data to flip-flop two before this B pause edge, okay, to meet its setup and hold time. So now let us look how it looks. So this is a simple diagram which I have drawn. So as you can see, there is no time borrowing. Our flip-flop is correctly sending the data before the neg edge and our latch is on. Because it's a negative latch, it will be on in the when the clock is off. So it is able to send the data correctly at the B, okay, at the B edge. This is the A edge, this is the B edge and it is sending the data before the setup time. So there is no issue with us in the circuit. Now let us consider what happens if this flip-flop one is unable to send the data in the correct time. So now let us consider the logic delay is greater than t by two. Okay, this logic is greater than t by two and this logic is less than t by two. So in this case, what happens is that our 
flip-flop one is unable to send the data within t by 2 so that might cause a problem actually it is not a problem but it might cause a problem if it was a flip-flop since we are using a latch now the latch will be open throughout this window so this window pq so it will be turned on it is transparent in this window so there will be a no problem but whatever time which we are borrowing in this window will be subtracted for the latch latch to flip-flop two path okay so as you can see here p to q before we were, a, we were checking the setup for the flip-flop one to latch was from A to P. But now, due to the time borrowed because of the delay, now our setup has been shifted from A to Q. But this is not a problem for us because we need to send the, from latch to flip-flop within this period of time. So, so the logic from latch to flip-flop must be so, so small and the delay should be able to handle this much amount of time and send the data appropriately. Okay, now let us look out how the, how the diagram looks like. So as you can see here, the time is being borrowed. So this is the A pause edge and this is the B pause edge. Now as you can see, the delay of the logic A is higher than T by 2. As a result, it's sending the data even in this off window. So this window is on, the data is transparent. So whatever the data we are giving, it will be easily gone through the latch. But as you can see, we have just this much amount of the time left after the time borrowed to send the data of logic B to the flip-flop 2. So now let us consider a uh, hold, whether adding a latch will give us a hold violation or not. So as you can see, our data will be received over here. So it must be stable after some time, that is a hold time, it must be stable till this time. So our next data will arrive at point S. Yeah, okay, our next data will arrive at S because the latch will be turned on in the negative cycle. Okay, so as a result, this data must come over here so that to violate the whole condition but this data cannot come over here so there is zero possibility of whole violations in if we are adding a latch so latches are used to fix the whole and set up and whole violations in case of a congested region where the logic is taking too much of time so these designs are mainly used in the processors and these are mainly used by using ECOs okay to reduce our effort and increase the performance of the design so now let us come back to our definition of time borrowing so this is the definition of time borrowing De time borrowing is a property of a latch ending at a latch a latch can borrow the time for the next path in the pipeline such that overall path of the two paths remains the same so I hope you understood now if a design is ending with a latch we can borrow the time from the next path in the pipeline but overall time of the two paths is similar so time borrowed by latch from the next stage in the pipeline is subtracted by the next path. So as you can see over here, if we have borrowed the, if we have borrowed the time from this latch, the latch to flip-flop time is being reduced. So that's what's the definition of time borrowing. I hope you have understood what's time borrowing. And if you have understood, then please do share with others who don't know time borrowing. And thanks for watching. Please do subscribe. That will help me a lot. And if you have any doubts, comment down below. I will make sure that I will respond within 24 hours. And thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you won't miss out any other new video which I post. And thanks for watching.